Hi all, I have another very interesting game to show you by Edward Panic. So this is Leela ID 10649, so 10 is the prefix for test server. And this is against Houdini 6, which I have on my machine actually, a very, very good commercial chess engine. Uh, so the setup here, 90 minute time control, GTX 1060 for Leela, four cores uh, for Houdini 6, D4. Now the book moves here, we'll get to the end of the book moves, so a very popular semi-slav, very topical. So this is the end of the book moves. Queen c2 here. Black plays bishop d6. Bishop d3 from Leela. Both sides castle. D takes. Bishop takes. Queen e7. Black's playing for the thematic looking e5. H3. E5. Bishop just drops back here. Uh, as long as there's no Greek gift, the pawns move out of the way for Greek gift. E4 doesn't seem so scary here, in principle. And actually, black declines the option of trying for E4. I think the pawn would be quite weak. So we see here bishop D2, A5, A3, H6, which does mean the light squares are subtly weakened. There's a pin pawn on F7. And Leela plays knight H4, so knight on the edge, threatening knight G6. With that pin pawn on f7 so rookie eight against knight g6 making that mostly harmless but knight f5 now queen d8 and now interestingly knight e2 this other knight reinforces the knight on f5 because it can be a tactical liability knight f8 and we see the other knight coming to its support so any g6 is discouraged because of knight takes here it seems so actually black gives up the light square bishop and plays e takes d4 now probably expecting something like e takes d4 or well, maybe if e takes d4 it seems white gets nothing from this position and it, as an example knight e6 knight d5 there's a nice blockade here on white's position so even though black gave up the light square bishop this looks like a really solid position with the isolated queen's pawn here pretty even uh, so actually after e takes d4 very interesting move Rook AD1 keeps a lot of dynamic potential. Temporary pawn sacrifice. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, D3 was played by Houdini. If D takes, then Bishop C3 is actually strong, hitting the Queen. This position is uh, interesting. It's it's a very very nice attacking position after Rook D4 with ideas like of Rook G4, uh, and yeah, there's a lot of dangers here as well. So this looks like a very, very dangerous position. We see actually uh, also here, as an example, queen c8, f takes is dangerous. For example, here, then there's simply bishop takes g7. Uh, this is very, very dangerous stuff for black, you know, potentially losing a piece even. So it's a very precarious position on, on d takes indeed. Uh, so d3 uh, was interesting response here. Uh, so d3 and so what's white's point queen c4 looks as though it's just Lila's just hitting f7 that's protected here on knight d5 that can be just kicked out of the way with e4 it seems if queen c if b5 then queen takes c6 with advantage for white for example here if we to follow this through bishop d5 and that d3 pawn's going to drop so uh we see queen d7 protecting f7 bishop c3 so a lot of pressure on the king side here now and Houdini reacts with rook e4 counter uh, hitting the queen so maybe uh, this is also interfering of course with you know, this is also hitting the knight on f5 uh, if we look at this position uh, the knight wasn't able to be taken here because queen takes f7 check and then queen takes c7 is a good advantage for white. So yeah, rook e4 here, but this is still a liability on f5. Uh, so queen takes is then there's no there's no f7 issue. So maybe queen takes f5 is on the cards there. So Leela actually given the knight's liability. Uh, actually here the queen is left attacking f7 with the move rook takes d3, believe it or not. And it seems as though is Leela falling into a horrible trap because black is not obliged 
to take the queen here. Uh, for example, rook takes, then rook takes. This position is fairly evening, even. Uh, but actually, black, guess what black does here? And you might may have thought this is uh, actually winning for black. Black to play. Plays bishop h2 check, actually. And uh, yeah, this this is uh, really dangerous now because if the king goes to h1, then rook takes c4, and black should be uh, fine, absolutely fine on this this line. In this line, uh, the king didn't move to h1; it actually took on h2, and we have this check. So with the queen hanging here. Hasn't Houdini just tricked White into losing the Queen? Leela's just lost her Queen here. Now, very interesting moments. In this moment, actually, Leela plays Bishop e5. This is really quite finessed. If the Queen uh, moves to c8, then knight e7 check. So the Queen is forced in front of the b pawn, which means b5 is taken out of the equation. If, for example, um, Bishop takes c4, then b5 is still in the equation here. So actually, Leela's move is interesting. You know, it it means that uh, this kind of setup with b5 is not possible for Black to achieve that easily. Uh, so we have this, you know, Bishop e5. So the Queen goes in front of the b pawn. Very interesting nuance. And now this is taken. So two pieces for the Queen. How good is this? Knight eight to d7. Bishop drops back, hitting the Queen. Now a4, locking down b5 again. So positional after just you know two pieces for the queen, playing as if it's a normal position, not blinking. King h7 is played here. We have rook fd1, rook b8, knight g3 now, and here knight d5. This is a bit committal actually. Knight d5. It's encouraging some simplification. Maybe king g8 is to be considered, but uh, knight d5. Leela takes on d5 and plays bishop c3. And th there's a lot of pressure on black's position now. Queen c6, hitting a4 at least. Rook takes, uh, which hits the knight. So not yet queen takes a4, but knight c5. Rook d6. And we see actually this bishop's eyeing g7, the rook's eyeing h6. But make a note of that. The king side's under a bit of scrutiny here, this little pawn chain. After takes rook one to d5 and now this is very dangerous for black if black plays b6 then actually even more pressure with knight h5 white's got a big advantage here actually uh, but we'll see a similar thing to the game to explore that that pressure we see black playing queen c4 here uh, now knight h5 in any case f6 and guess what Lila plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, starting from now. Okay. Knight takes g7. Yeah, this, this starts to really damage black's king. King takes. Rook takes f6. Yeah, black, the black king is really exposed. So much so that Houdini thought the best move was to play queen takes, counter sack the queen. As an example here, uh, rook c8. A key move is actually f5, believe it or not. Uh, this is, and it's, it's this movement of the f pawn, a bit like this nuance over here with the b pawn, which actually, by the way, before we move on here, made this stronger than that. Uh, <laughs> actually, it doesn't matter. The f pawn's going to move anyway. Ignore that. Uh, I, I think I imagined something else there. <laughs> no. Ignore that. Sorry. Rook takes f6. Okay. In this position, rook c8, f5, and we have b5 uh, in this line. So, so say say this line with rook c8, b5, and this is really dangerous for black here. This is a really dangerous position. Big advantage for white. So rook c8 is not that great. King g8 as an alternative. Then this position. The rooks kind of combine against the king and win, win a rook. Uh, 
yeah it's just all over for black so very very tricky possession after rook takes f6 so we have queen takes c3 counter sack now this this is really actually quite good now for white uh black's pawn potential is not entirely great here king takes rook takes rook a8 rook b5 a4 leader snaps up b7 and actually plays a, a little finesse here g4 might be good but a little finesse to keep the king out a bit longer uh, a3 g4 check pushing the king back and now rook b1 so a nice little finesse but i believe it was winning anyway by this point even with g4 check even without that finesse so rook a1 a2 and now it's just overwhelming white's pawns over here and actually just winning it doesn't matter if this rook was gobbled up for the pawn the two connected pawns pawns would be winning so the black king retreats back this looks like a miserable yeah situation uh, indeed with the two connected pass pawns there just everything going forward so it's played on to the death this particular game uh, so just showing some technique and uh, carries on to the death so anyway I thought that was quite a fascinating game so there's checkmate it's quite a fascinating game i thought uh presented in the forums the queen sack kept you know some dynamic imbalances in the position it was quite easy for white to just be saddled with the isolated queen's one a nice blockade with, with a level position but by doing the queen sack uh there's some real potential for increasing ramp, ramping up the pressure and damaging it seems black's king side so really uh, accentuating the advantage of the two pieces there Okay, hope you enjoyed that one. Comments, questions, like, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.